Would you like to know four reasons why I converted my greenhouse from a standard soil grow system to this aquaponic system that you see right here? Hi, I'm Christy with GreenLivingOffGrade.com and today we're going to be talking about four benefits of an aquaponic system over soil growing. When I first started this greenhouse several years ago, I used to have soil beds here in the lower shelf and soil beds in the upper shelf. And on the upper shelf, I have uh, tomato plants growing. And here on the lower shelf, I have a lot of you know, small crops like beans and I also grew a lot of lettuce in those years. And one of the things that I really, really like about aquaponics is that it conserves water. And because you're cycling that water from the aquaponic tank to your grow beds and then back to your aquaponic tank, there's very little water loss. You have a little bit of evaporation and that's about it because the water just continuously cycles through the system. And so here in Colorado, where we have limits on the what we can use the water for in a well permit, it is a real advantage to have an aquaponic system that conserves that water. The second advantage of aquaponics is that it saves cost on fertilizer. When I was growing a soil-based garden here in the greenhouse, I had to put fish emulsion and different kinds of fertilizers to keep my plants growing well uh, every year. But here with aquaponics, the fish water provides all the nutrients that is needed for my lower shelf plants, my lettuce, my beans. They do really well in this aquaponic system and I don't have to pay for fertilizer to keep them supplied with what they need. And in the upper shelf where I grow tomatoes, I do have to add some fertilizers. I do uh, a deep water culture system, which is a hydroponic system where you add aeration to the water reserves to help the roots do well and grow well in the system. And so with the hydroponic setup, I do have to add some nutrients. Now, I added nutrients to my grow beds when I was growing the tomatoes with the soil-based gardening and I still had some issues because with the soil base you're limited on the ability to control those nutrients and also uh, keep the water stable and so I actually had some issues with keeping my plants balanced when I soil grew them in the containers in the upper shelf. But here with hydroponics, I'm able to get exactly the right formula that I want for those plants. And because I add the fish water as a base for my hydroponic system, I save a significant amount of cost on nutrients in the hydroponic setup. In fact, the first year when I just grew strictly with hydroponics, I was having to do water changes in and change out the nutrients every week to keep my tomatoes balanced. And that was very costly, especially with nutrients in hydroponics because I have noticed that they have doubled the cost of nutrients from when I first started a few years ago. It is a lot more expensive to buy those nutrients that are formulated for tomatoes. But here with aquaponics, I put the fish water in every week and I only add the hydroponic nutrients every month. Just once a month I add some nutrients in and then I just run fish water the rest of the time with a, my deep water culture system and that is just an incredible savings on hydroponic nutrients. I go through maybe about a, a third of the nutrients in a year than what I did that first year when I first started growing strictly with hydroponics on the tomatoes in the deep water culture bins. And then a third advantage of hydroponics and aquaponics over the soil based gardening that I used to have here in the greenhouse is that it is a lot cleaner, it's significantly cleaner. With the grow beds that I had here, I just had a, a regular tray, I would put holes in the bottom. Now I know you can put a, a tray to collect the water, but with the way that was set up, it dripped from the upper shelves down to the lower shelves and that created quite a bit of mess for my lettuce. You can imagine cleaning the mud, drippy water out of the lettuce. That was quite a pain for me. And yes, I could have put more cost in, and invested in some nice grow trays that would, you know, perhaps funnel the water somewhere so it wouldn't fall on the lower shelves, but that would have been a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to design 
And for me, when I just went to this hydroponic setup and aquaponics, with aquaponics, it cycles back into the fish water. And with hydroponics, I have an easy drain system. I have everything all connected. And so it keeps everything nice and clean. And it was a lot easier to set up than trying to figure out how to put a drip tray that would then funnel through the shelving system. It would have been a lot harder to set that up. And so for the hydroponics though, because the deep water culture bins are self-contained in that they do not cycle back to the fish tank I just add the fish water as a base, then I put my hydroponic nutrients and I don't cycle them back because you don't want to hurt your fish by adding hydroponic nutrients that are not designed to work with fish. So I have the upper shelf hydroponic system all connected um, where the trays are all connected to each other to kind of keep that water level balanced between the trays. And so I can easily just check one bin and know how much water level is in the, that particular shelving unit's set of bins but I do not cycle those back into the fish tank. So with that setup, it's very easy to just, I put like a little hose on the end of each of the shelving systems. And if I need to drain that, I just connect up a hose, let it drain out to my garden, and then I'll add water as needed and add my supplements with that. But that is how I set up the upper shelf system to keep it self-contained, separate from the aquaponic system, but at the same time, uh, able to run that water from the fish tank directly into those beds when I'm ready to add nutrients or um, to set the water for the week since I do weekly uh, water fills on my hydroponic setup. So it's a much cleaner system, much more contained. I used to have to go out here every night and water for 20 minutes a night, but now I can go camping with my family and this is the fourth benefit of hydroponics and aquaponics here in the greenhouse is I can go camping with my family for several days and I only have to worry about adding water once a week. And so I'm not out here 20 minutes a night trying to get everything hydrated because when a tomato plant is just about full grown, it uses a gallon of water per day. And so they can go through quite a bit of water and if you're in a soil based garden system where it's evaporating that water is evaporating constantly in the heat of summer it can be very time consuming to go out here and water those plants and try to keep that soil hydrated and that was one of the biggest problems i had if you can see with my pictures of the tomatoes when i grew them under soil you could see they were you know small little plants they just didn't grow very well you could see the yellowing on leaves and they were just sparse they didn't grow super well with that kind of setup but here with hydroponics i have no trouble growing those and and getting them to fill out well and not having the imbalance you can see in the leaves they grow very nicely here in this deep water culture system and with the aquaponics as a base it saves cost and it saves a significant amount of time because here in the aquaponics lower shelf system those plants cycle through with the water constantly every day i don't have to hire somebody to come in and water my plants here in the greenhouse when we go on a camping trip for a few days in the summer everything is self-contained everything maintains itself and it's just saves me a significant amount of time and also going back to my third reason that I like to grow with aquaponics as far as it being clean I don't have the mud dripping down on the plants but also I don't have to worry about the gnats now if you go and you buy cheap garden potting soil over in you know like Home Depot and some retailer like that they don't bake that soil. They, the reason it's cheap is because they process it in a way that it's easier to produce, but it has a lot of larvae for gnats. And I had a significant problem with gnats in the greenhouse because, because we're in this building and not out in the garden where there's a lot of birds flying around to be able to eat those suckers up. I had a significant problem with those gnats that would be soil-based pests, <laughs> if you will that would come up out of that soil and it, they'd be flying all over here in the greenhouse. Here with aquaponics, it's a lot cleaner, not just from the soil perspective, but also those gnats. I don't have to put diatomaceous ground up seashells on the soil like I used to do here in the, in the garden to try to maintain 
the the soil and get the, rid of those gnats unless I wanted to pay a lot of money to buy the the bakes um, potting soil which is a significant cost jump and I didn't want to do that I didn't have the money to do that so here now with aquaponics I don't have to worry about that and another advantage of aquaponics is you don't have weeds coming in and seeding your bed especially if you grow them with the cracky set up here cracky is basically where the roots are suspended in a as you see here a little little um, net pot like this those roots are suspended in a net pot and they come down into the water of the tray it's very easy to clean this out when i have to change crops i just pull my plant out pull the roots out rinse out my trays and i'm done it's that easy and so here in this little cracky setup of aquaponics because the plants are suspended in the lid the lid here of my tray, I don't have to worry about the weeds that would come up along the side in the back of the greenhouse where I can't get to those grass. When the plants are all filled out here in the tray, I can't get back there and pull those grasses that would come up and they come underneath the side of the greenhouse and they just grow up along the back shelf. And when I had soil-based gardens in here, that was an incredible trouble for me because I could not get back there and the grass would come up along the side and then they would seed over the summer and I constantly had weeds that I was pulling throughout the year trying to get those weeds out of my dirt beds and every spring it was a real pain I you know how it is when you have potting soil it's like a, it, it dries out over the winter and you go and it, you try to get it hydrated again and it's like dealing with an old sponge that hasn't been uh, used in a long time. It's hard and you're, it's clumpy and so you have to work with that and that was always a huge pain to set up every spring trying to get the uh, soil ready for, for growing. But here in aquaponics it's very easy. All I have to do is run that water in to my trays. First of all I'll rinse them out after the winter. You know it's gotten dusty and things like that here in the greenhouse. And so I'll rinse everything out. Then I'll set the trays up, put my plants in, put my uh, little rock wall cubes like you see here. That's the little um, a little square cube here in, in the base of the plant. I have my little hydrogen around it. I could seed my plants and then they would grow nice and, and beautiful here in the greenhouse. It's a very easy system to set up. If you're just thinking about starting with aquaponics, I encourage you to buy my video course on building with aquaponics. And I'll show you how to make a system just like this what I have done here in the greenhouse. I'll walk you through all the plumbing and all the pieces that you need to be able to build an aquaponic system that you can put in your greenhouse. Uh, also, if you're thinking about getting started with aquaponics, let me encourage you to download our free PDF guide, Quick Start Aquaponics, how to avoid the five most common mistakes that people make when they're starting aquaponics. You can just go to greenlivingoffgrid.com Enter your email address and you can download that free PDF guide, Quick Start Aquaponics, on our site. Thanks again for watching and as always, don't forget to check out Green Living Off Grid for more helpful tips and resources growing with aquaponics, hydroponics, and organic gardening. Happy growing everyone and I'll see you next time.